We are here at the Aero in Friedrichshafen and today we will check out the latest stuff in gliding and electric flying. Let's get in there. We are here at the booth of Atlantec. They have an Antares glider and with a range extender project. Hi, Stefan. Hi, hello. <laughs> this will be uh, the position of the range extender we plan to install into the aircraft. The system is already running on a test bench wow. in our company in Augsburg. So, but the position will be here. And uh, we have the batteries in the, in the wings installed and uh, the motor in the nose. So yeah. this is the conversion of, of the original Antares. Okay. And it's important to say for us that we are builder of this aircraft. So in this case, Lange was only uh, the OEM that delivered the Nassau for us. And what's the, the range with the batteries and what's the range yeah. with the... So with we, the have, we have three configurations. So the first configuration, the smallest one, is that we have the battery here in the, in the compartment with around four kilowatt hours. So this is a range of a little bit more than 100 kilometers. Then the second configuration is battery in the back and the additional batteries in the wing. And there we have a range of 450 kilometers around. And the long range configuration will be that we put out the battery here, put the range extender in the compartment, and then it's only dependent from the amount of fuel you take with you. So in the end, uh, we can reach around 1,000 kilometers wow. range with, let's say, 20 liters additional fuel. Yeah. Really efficient. Uh, and really so efficient yeah. because uh, we, in the flight program we did so far, we discovered that we have only 4.8 kilowatt power we need to fly level. Wow. And that's how you see how efficient the aerodynamic of this plane is with the propeller in the front. And you use the front electric sustainer um, like yeah. used in other gliders as Yeah, well? so we have a close cooperation with LZ Design. Uh, they developed a motor for us with a little bit more higher voltage than in other planes. So this motor can, can go up to 300 volts. And uh, the propeller is, uh, is much larger, it's uh, 1.2 meters in diameter. Okay, so it is possible to self-launch and yeah. to stay so we air. did so far two self-launches. One self lodge was in, in Manching at the airport, ah, in, at, the airport. <laughs> at the huge airport yeah, yeah. for the first time. Of course, you will have a lot of runway and the second self launch was then in Augsburg. Okay. Two on, on pavement okay. and uh, grass runway is still, uh, still to do. Okay. Uh, but the takeoff distance was between 180 and 300 meters. So first wow. time we had headwind. Uh, second time we had tailwind, so, yeah. but I, in the middle I would say it's around 200 meters. Okay, and what's the climb rate, the maximum? 2.5 meters okay. with 25 kilowatt hours, so the motor can, more, can do more, so up to 30 kilowatt hours, so I ex ex expect more or less 3 meters per second okay. initial yeah. climb. That's enough. Yeah. That's enough. So this is the integration of the, uh, of the face and the controller for the engine. You switch on here uh, and now we have, don't have installed the, the batteries for the, for the fare here, but this is, all, uh, is running. You see that the controller is connected with the LX uh, 9000. Okay, and then the, um, the range extender is also integrated here somehow in this... Uh, yeah, La later, later then later we will we'll put it also here in, the, okay. in this controller. And uh, for, for switching on the, the battery, you have this switch here, where you switch on the, the relay for, for the high voltage. And to switch it off again, you just go back with that switch, and then it's switched off here and in the controller. You have and here a key. <laughs> yeah, the key Something is, <laughs> is the 12 volt supply for, for variometer. Okay. And starting, starting off this instrument here, yeah. because for the initial startup, you need you need 12 volts, and everything else here the normal input uh, from Lange. Yeah, and yeah. And so we we didn't have to change anything on the plane. Uh, what is very nice for us because we didn't have to change uh, the the pedals and everything. So this was very good that we didn't have to change and 
for that reason, we didn't have to make any uh, uh, any new certification of, of that plane. So we only had to make certification for the mount of the engine and the mount of the batteries. That's all. So this propeller is larger than uh, on other phase planes. And that's why we can self-launch. It's 1.2 meters. But we still have, with this high undercarriage, we still have 25 centimeters of gap between propeller and ground. If we have a closer look here in the cockpit and we find some uh, parts which you also did by your own, which is not stock from Lange, what's new here? Yeah, of course, because this is an experimental aircraft, uh, we had some, some freedom to put some own parts into the aircraft. So, of course, because we also do a 3D printing or additive manufacturing, yeah. Uh, as to say, we also included some, some parts in the cockpit that is also printed. So one of these printed parts is uh, uh, the cockpit here, so the panel. So it's, it's printed all in once with all holes, with all cutouts uh, and everything. So it's just one piece uh, and it's just painted and that's all. It came out of the machine Great. and the other part is here this part here, this is the canopy holder. This is a metal printed part uh, made of titanium in one piece. And what's the advantage of this piece? Yeah, so it's it's just one piece, so you don't have to, to, to assemble it yeah. and, uh, and weld it. And we don't need any, any surface protection because titanium is, is very stable uh, in that case. And uh, of course, uh, the weight. So it's made of titanium, the weight is of aluminium, and the strongness is of steel. Actually, we have here the, our battery modules that we are um, integrated into the wings. This battery module is the first begin module, the middle module, and the end module. The middle module we can scale up um, in this wing with uh, 2 meters 22, and we have in these modules on the left and on the right wing. These battery modules are 3D printed um, in our print farm here and it was integrated the 18650 cells. On this side we see a mock-up from the battery management systems and they will communicate it here and we can um, control every cell, every module in this, in this chain over the sequence for the loading and deloading. Our experiences that we have in this uh, production of these battery modules we can save on this wingtip wheel that we are produced at our print farm and we are self-developing. We print it in PA6, it's a polyamide 6 uh, with CFK inside and we can print here like this form and we can, des we can design every size or every, every, dis uh, every creation um, you can imagine about. The advantage of the printing system is that we are very light uh, to the original, we save about more than 50% from the weight um, when we print it uh, on, with PA6 CFK. Actually, why is it lighter than the original? You can see here inside, this is a lever, and we can print inside here CFK rovings. There are six rovings layers, and it's very stable. and you need 876 Newton to break it over. Wow. Okay, Stefan, thank you so much. Thank it was great so to see all this. <laughs> and perhaps uh, I have the possibility to fly this uh, glider. Why not? Why not? Uh, would, would be fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you. And what I really find great is um, this tail wheel because at my LS3 I only have the possibility to have a tail skid and there's no wheel installation in the fuselage possible and, and this is really an amazing upgrade which I will test soon. So stay tuned for this. We are here at Airbat, one of my sponsors. They produce batteries for gliders and it is getting more and more important to have enough power in your glider because we use electric bug wipers, LED flashers, 
and big navigation devices. So that's really important. What's new here? Hello, Thomas. Hello. Wir haben hier unsere neue Serie Avionik äh, mit 12 Ampere Stunden, die wir jetzt ganz neu rausgebracht haben, die vorbereitet ist für das CS dann, um die Bleibatterie im Segelflugzeug auch legitim zu tauschen. Mit 156 Wattstunden ist sie genau unter den 160 Wattstunden, die vorgeschrieben sind. Und man kann sie dann dort einbauen. Ja, super. Dazu kommt und ich habe jetzt noch diese Batterie drin, die hat äh, 10 Ampere Stunden. Also das ist der Vorgänger. Wie ist das Gewichtsunterschied? Genau. Ist, da ist gleich. Ist gleich. Ja. Ist gleich. Ja. 20 ja. mehr Einfach. Energie. Genau. Und die, fünf, die ehemalig 15er hat jetzt 18 Ampere Stunden. Ne? Auch 3 Ampere Stunden mehr. Und der große Hammer, die 20 Ampere Stunden, hat jetzt 32. Ja? Okay, super. So. Dann ähm, habe ich hier drüben noch was sehr Interessantes gesehen. Einen Koffer, wo alle ähm, Akkus und Ladegerät, alles mit drin ist. Ja. Jetzt hier für den Ventus, für die Ventus Heckbatterie und die zwei Avionik Batterien. Hier passt, ist eine Ausfräsung für das Ladegerät drin, auch unseren Duolader mit den MPX-Steckern, so wie das auch von Champet ausgeliefert wird. Die Batterien versehen wir jetzt automatisch schon mit einem Tragegurt, damit man das Isolierband nicht mehr braucht und kann die in dem Koffer halt eben im Anhänger wo dann auch das Kullerchen und äh, die Abschleppstange und so weiter die Batterien normal beschädigen könnten, sind dort in einem optimalen Koffer geschützt für solche Sachen. Okay, super. Vielen Dank, Thomas. Und, Dankeschön. Äh, ja, ich fliege weiterhin mit Herbert. Ja. <lacht>